Oh, that's funny. Welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This is episode 255. I'm your host, Chris Britton, so let's go. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all of your latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. And remember to use code DIAL5 at checkout for 5% off of your total order. Joining me in the studio again this week is my sexy ranch hand co host, Calder Ness. What is going on, Calder Ness? Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So, just the listener knows. That was the first time I've ever had to redo an intro because yeah, I messed Chris up, screwed it up so bad. badly. I was like, what What am I even – I think I'm tired, man. This you know, guy. You know what made me tired? What made you tired? The anticipation game? of in-game was too much, and it, it put me into a little snooze. So I'm glad that's over. That happened today. Normally we like to start us off with what made us happy this week. Uh, Calder, would you like to start off this week? Yeah, absolutely. It was Avengers Endgame. I uh, I mean, we've all been so hyped for this for years growing up with these movies and everything. I was uh, I was incredibly stoked to finally see it. Um, it was great. I got to wear a cap costume to the premiere, took a few pictures, uh, you know, shook a couple of babies, kissed some hands, all that good stuff. Had a great time. Finally sat down in the movie and I was like, yeah, whatever it takes. Let's do it. No, seriously, it was probably it's going to be like my all time favorite comic book movie it was like perfect like for uh the way i mean i don't know we're not gonna spoil it at all but i mean anthony and joe russo are mortal men in this earthly plane and they they may have done what we could say is as close to perfection as they could get to that was pretty darn good yeah i'm super super happy with what they did but we're not going to talk about it this week i think what we've decided is we're going to give it an additional week just so more of our listeners can go out and see it and then I believe at the end of next episode, we're going to go way crazy into spoiler territory, talk about it, what we liked about the movie, what we're going to take forward, and just everything endgame related. But what else made me happy this week that completely slid under the radar for a lot of people because, well, some people just haven't even given it a chance, and then also because Endgame came out was the season finale of the Orville which was fantastic, and I, um, man, I, I guess, you know, just everybody's doing some time travel shenanigans this week, so that was... Oh, uh, sweet, there's time travel in Game of Thrones? Nice, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's a thing, people are watching that. Um, I don't. Well, some people, some people, I like, I like Game of Thrones, I just can't watch it. What a loser. Right uh, also, anyway. Cloak and Dagger is in full swing, and man... I love time travel last time, that, right? no. May, I, no, no, I don't think they did time travel. Okay. But, <laughs> but uh, it's super good as well, so if you haven't had the chance to go and check that out, that's on Hulu. Uh, so, is, so is the Orville, so uh, there's a reason to get Hulu. Uh, but that's that's all I got for what kind of made me happy. Oh, no, I had one more thing. I had one more thing. Uh, at the beginning of the year, I told myself this, this was going to be the year of me reading a lot more like non-comic book related stuff. I mean like adult books. And uh, I finally made it, and I, I stuck to it pretty well, and I finally made it to a book that I've been anticipating for a while. And um, I, I knew eventually, just, I mean, everybody kind of knows at this point I'm going into the military. And I wanted to read this book called On War by Carl von Clausewitz, and it's like super crazy thick. It's like three inches thick. But, mm. yeah, it's like every single officer in the military has to read this book like it's basically Jeez. non-optional but i'm super excited for it and jumping into that so the anticipation for that also is going to be um some people out there like he's such a nerd yeah we're here talking about hero clicks what did you think was going <laughs> to so uh that i'm excited for as well but uh we are not here to talk about Klauswitz. We are here to talk about Heroclix, so let's go ahead and jump into the news section because we got quite a few spoilers this week. Not that one. <laughs> man, tonight's just gonna be gaff after gaff for me. Yeah, I think dude. I think what it is, man, like I walked out of Endgame so emotionally drained 
that I was like, I, I told Jalen, I was like, I need to take a nap before I record, and then I didn't, and that was a mistake. <laughs> All right, so we have seven uh, spoiled things this week, figures and some equipment of upcoming OP set and then as well as an upcoming full-blown set. I think we're going to go ahead and start off with the OP kit, if that's cool with you, Calder. We have to. Uh, if we have to. Okay, well, I will start us off with... Uh, so just so everybody knows, it is the, it's the—it's like an X-Women OP kit, which I think is really cool. I think this might be... One of the only OP kits entirely comprised of women ever made, which I thought was, I was I'm like, that's kind of cool. But also, there's plenty of very... I just want to say, and this is like one thing, it's called Empowered, and not any of these uh, these ladies having power on their dial. <laughs> just saying, just saying. <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> fair enough. But as far as a full-blown women X-Men OP kit, they chose three very strong and very independent ladies to carry this OP kit. So I think they did a pretty good job on the choice selection. We could have ended up with, like, characters like Mero. Like, no one wants Mero in an OP kit, you know? One person who wanted Mero is, like, really mad at you now. <laughs> okay. So starting off with Rogue, we have the Avengers Brotherhood of Mutants and the X-Men keyword. Uh, no special powers. Uh, and we have Indom, which is cool, and Flight, which is also cool, which you would expect a Rogue to have. One trait says, I'll have what you're having. When Rogue hits an adjacent opposing character, after resolutions, choose a standard power a hit character can use. Non-optional. That hit character gets an action token and can't use the chosen power until your next turn. Until she chooses again, Rogue can use the chosen power and her range value becomes the printed range value of the hit character. So before we go into the dial itself, I think... This might be the closest representation of Rogue's powers that they have ever done. What do you think? Um, yeah, I would say it's pretty much close to how they would work in the comics. I mean, I would say it's pretty close. Her powers are kind of convoluted to explain to other people. So to transpose that into the game of Heroclix is already weird. And they've done some weird stuff with Rogue in the ba- in the past. So I think that they've done a pretty decent job. And I thought that the one from uh, the Uncanny X-Men set was actually pretty good. But I think this one is better as far as the wording. I think uh, for keeping it, like, simple and not trying to be, like, really crazy convoluted with it, like, just you hit, get a power, get their range. Like, that that works really well for Rogue. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. So I think they did a good job to jump into the dial. She is 100 points. Uh, She is seven clicks long. And she's... I mean, the dial's pretty bland, but I think it works. She starts off with charge, 10 speed, uh, 11 attack with super strength, 18 defense with invul, and 4 printed damage. So for this 100 points, you're topping off with 6 damage top dial. That's pretty freaking good. Uh, Her attack is going to go down to a 10, and then it stays a 10 until her last click, which is only a 9. Top 2 clicks of her dial, she has charge, and then she goes into sidestep, but... On click three, and then through the rest of her dial, she has close combat expert. So her damage, based off of the printed damage, with the plus two damage, can be five, four, 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 five, which is awesome. And then on all of those clicks, she has steel energy. So she's actually, I think, a pretty solid little beat stick. And uh, if you don't want, like, that weird stuff that, she did from the Uncanny X-Men set with, like, the ionic energy getting pulled from uh, Simon, then Wonder Man, uh, then this is kind of like a really good rogue, especially if you're running on her, her on an Avengers theme team like I would be doing because I don't run X-Men, and she has the X-Men team ability. So there's your rogue. I think it's a pretty decent little figure and probably worth getting your hands on. We really should have started this with saying their stats are dumb on all these characters. Like... I'm going to jump into Storm here really quick, and I'm just going to tell you how dumb these stats are. So Storm has one trait. She has the flight ability, seven range, one bolt, no other special combat symbols besides flight. She is only 75 points. Good Lord. Uh, Her trait is the collapsible shield. Our approach, passenger three, but only to carry characters that share a keyword, which is Wakanda, X-Men, and Ruler with her. Friendly characters in three squares that share a keyword with her can use stealth. So... Uh, she can now be a new uh, mini Blackbird for people on X-Men, although she's only moving up six squares if she's carrying three people, which is a, kind of a bummer, but she's now giving everyone stealth, 
as long as you're within three squares of her. Not line of fire, just within three squares. That's really, really nice. So yeah, that's a little dumb. Her special defense power for her first three clicks and then on her last click is going to be Super Senses when Storm is missed by an attack. After resolutions, you may knock back the attacker two squares. Uh, man, I wish she had Super Senses ESD. <laughs> that would be so awesome. Uh, she does get ESD later, but sadly not that special power. I like that. I like the little gust wind thing, which is knocking people back. She starts with three clicks of running shot, three clicks of leadership. She has a 9, 12, 18, 3. So even though she doesn't have an 11, 4, like 11 attack, 4 damage, like these other two ladies, she's got a 12 attack, 3 damage top dial, which is pretty nuts. Uh, no attack power. Her second two clicks, she does pick up energy explosion. Uh, on her last three, she gets some sidestep, she has some enhancement with some ESD on some clicks, and she gets energy explosion again on her last click, where she all of a sudden gets four damage. So a nice little uh, nine attack, four damage there for you. Rogue's, uh, not Rogue, but uh, Storm is pretty dumb. Uh, I like it a lot. Uh, it's really, really sick, honestly. I, I think she is so good. Like, so good. <laughs> and uh, I'm really glad that they gave another Storm the Wakanda keyword. Uh, especially right. because people are like, oh, well, yeah, she was married to Black Panther a long time ago. Well, she jumped back into the Black Panther storyline with T'Challa in, like, 2018 or something like that. So, like, she's still around in the Wakandan little world and stuff like that. So it makes sense to give her that keyword. So I, that's pretty legit. I liked it a lot. Uh, the last figure is going to be the Phoenix coming in at 100 points. Uh, we do actually have a special power on this one. She starts with the Phoenix, or she has the Phoenix Force, X-Men, and Cosmic Keywords with a trait. It's called the Power of Life Itself. Once per game, when Phoenix would be KO'd, instead, turn her to click number six and remove her action tokens. Protected, Pulse Wave. Uh, that's lowercase protected. Uh, she's, she has, like I said, a special attack power, but she doesn't get that until the last click of her dial, and it makes it a really weird dial. She starts off with 10 speed. She has Flight and Endom. 10 speed with running shot, 11 attack with telekinesis, 18 defense with super senses, and 4 printed damage. Man, there's a lot of damage in this OP set. Uh, she, It's weird because she's not really like an offensive character, and I don't know what you're really going to do with her. As like you, You're not really going to use her as a telekinesis character, but she doesn't have like penetrating or anything on top dial, which I think is really weird. But her attack powers go telekinesis, and then on the second, uh, on clicks number two and three of her six-click long dial, she has pinsai, but her attack drops down to a ten. On click four and five, she has pulse wave, and then on click number twelve, this is the click that I just think is funny. She has zero speed with no speed power. Twelve attack with that special attack power that I told you about, and that special attack power is called reborn from the ashes, pulse wave. When Phoenix uses it after resolutions. Heal her a number of clicks equal to the number of characters that took damage, which is pretty cool. Except it's almost like encouraging you to damage your own characters if they're right next to you because you're like, well, at least I get a heal off of this. She has seven printed range, by the way, so four uh, squares away, you're going to be hitting a decent amount of people. Sixteen defense with regen in case you you don't want to uh, do the pulse wave or no one's in range you can just uh, regen and she has four printed damage so if you single target pulse wave there i guess there's that also she has the x-men team ability so this one's a little bit more weird than the other two not as straightforward especially because her powers kind of just jump all over the place she's got some sidestep in the middle of her dial but not on the last click so less useful i don't know what do you think yeah the whole zero movement really sucks but uh that last click i mean if there's only one opposing character who you're next to um they're just gonna get like wrecked into the ground with a 12 attack four damage pulse wave especially if they've been fighting this phoenix to get her down dial i think the stats on this character are insane i like her starting with telekinesis. People didn't really like that, but it's very reminiscent of the uh, Colossal Phoenix that had the whole running shot telekinesis. So that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a great Phoenix style. I think it's awesome. Um, but seriously, the stats on all these OP kit characters are probably better than every figure in Rebirth. Like, it's insane. Yeah, they did For their, really for their really point dumb. value. Like, it's awesome. For sure. So I think, the best one is Storm, though, right? Can we agree on that? I think Storm is just amazing for X-Men teams. Like, 
it's great, especially with all the perplex on those teams. It's you know, I think she's amazing. So um, absolutely, if you're a Rogue, Phoenix, Storm fan, or just like X-Men in general, or any of these keywords, like Chris says, like Avengers or whatever, um, get them, because they're just a really good figures. You know, sometimes in an OP kit, it's like, ah, uh, there's like one good one, the other two are really lame and just kind of bland and, you know, run of the mill for that character. But these are all really, really good. True. Oh, agreed. All right, well, that is your OP kit. Uh, let's move on to the very first previews that we got for the upcoming Black Panther and the Illuminati set. I know there is uh, there's at least one of these that you've been dying to talk about, Colin. A little, so, little bit, yeah. Yeah, so why don't you go ahead and take that one. Um, cool. Uh, before we start, I want to thank Two Clicks from KO uh, for doing this up for us. I'm just saying, WizKids seems to be showing a lot of love, handing out these previews, you know, giving them <laughs> to, uh, to Click Stops, getting some previews. And I was like, okay, Tyler won the, the World Championship, so that's cool. But then, you know, all of a sudden... Uh, Two clicks over here is getting a little bit of preview love, and I'm just kind of thinking, hey, this is a really good uh, Hero Clips podcast. I know. I know they like Captain America. One of them really likes Captain America. I'm just... <laughs> I'll Gee say golly. I wonder, I wonder why they don't want to reach out to us and ask us to help them do previews. I wonder why. <laughs> well, with that attitude, Chris, all right, come on, man. My blatant sarcasm? No. Yeah, it's all Chris's fault. No. Uh, but seriously, this Captain America is amazing. We were right. He was a chase. They normally put the chases on the back of the box. Uh, this Captain America is a chase. He is 0, 71. A lot of figures in the set, I know. Avengers, Illuminati, and Soldier. Uh, I've never read this Illuminati run. Don't like the idea of Captain America being part of something called the Illuminati, but I'm gonna, I can get over that. Uh, he's 135 points. He has a trait that is a plus 15. He has no special combat symbols. And he has the Avengers team ability, 6 range 1 bolts, which means he does not have Indom at all, which is very interesting. His uh, plus 15 trait is Captain America starts the game, so if he's 150, with a with one Avengers Omega symbol, whatever, Infinity Gauntlet equipped, which means we're going to get a couple of Infinity Gauntlets. They'll each do a few different things. We're going to talk about one here in a bit. He has one trait, the gems, they want to be together. Barrier, Barrier is free, but only to generate one marker. Captain America can't be healed Takes a maximum of one damage from an attack. Protected pulse wave. This, this is such a dumb, dumb trait to have. So you have to chew through. It's only six clicks of life. But he still has damage reducers because he'll make you fight through those, I guess. So even though he can't be healed, he still only takes one damage at a time. It's dumb. His you special, have to hit him six times. You gotta hit him at least six times. Um, and that's if he misses impervious... And if you can hit, that's right, a 19 defense, not once, but twice? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we'll get into that a little bit here. His special attack power, which he has his entire dial, and he has an 11 attack his entire dial. It's very aesthetically pleasing. Along with that, he has a 3 damage his entire dial, uh, which is really, really, really cool. So, his blah, attack power, knockback, all caps, period. When Captain America knocks a character back, Add 10 to the amount of knockback. <laughs> you're... All right, all right, cool, 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 cool. So you're telling me, on top of I shoot someone for three damage, they take two, which means they take the two damage, and so they get knocked back two squares. On top of that, I get to add 10 to the amount of knockback? So you're saying it's just like, go back to your starting area, bud. That's super dumb. Uh, I do want to briefly explain why this makes sense in case anybody out there has not read it but during the secret wars storyline uh well actually it was during the the new avengers and the avengers run uh that hickman wrote that led up to the secret wars storyline with god doom and stuff like that there's these things called incursions and planets are collapsing in on each other they're literally running into each other the name of the power is pushing planets away that's how he temporarily prevents the Earth, the 616 Earth, from getting destroyed. He uses the Infinity Gauntlet to push an Earth away from the 616 Earth so that they don't just collapse in on each other and, and annihilate each other. So that's there's the background information for that. I love it. I love it. Caps just blasting planets away. <laughs> so he has six range. He has sidestep top dial with 10 movement. Again, that attack power. 18 defense, that pink power, and 3 damage with ranged combat expert. 
after that, he takes some damage. He goes into, so all of his clicks are segmented into two clicks by two clicks by two clicks. So it's the sidestep, invincible, range combat expert clicks. Then it goes charge, impervious, and close combat expert. Uh, when he has impervious, he only has a 17 defense for those two clicks. And then on his last two clicks, he has a 12 with phasing, 19 with defend, and a three damage with support. So Captain America, he loves blasting fools, and uh, he loves uh, he loves healing people, and also defending with a freaking 19 defense. Are you kidding me? It's pretty good. Um, I love this Captain America a lot. He's a chase, which means I'm gonna have to buy like at least a case of this set, if not more, and I can't wait. So just while we're here, we're talking about chases. Do you think that this is indicative of a theme, or do you think this is just like a random thing that they did with, uh, what was the set with? Battle it World? Had, yeah, ba- it had like 1 million BC, Man. and then also it had like randomly other stuff in there. I really hope it's a theme. If not, I hope it fills out the rest of BC and then the other half of whatever they were trying to do. Because there's a Black Panther with the Infinity Gauntlet in that set. So maybe they're going to be like half filling out the themes. I don't know. I either hope it's a full people with gauntlets theme or if it's a half filled out uh people with gauntlets members of the illuminati and then more thousand bc people whatever only time will tell but you got to talk about captain america and while we're on the topic i did want to talk about the infinity gauntlet which is dumb i love it i really do it's 30 points it's indestructible equip any unequipped drop and here's what it does effect it's a light object by the way effect free Choose a standard power, then roll a d6. If you get a 5 or a 6, you may choose an additional standard power. Um, 1 to 2, deal this character one unavoidable damage. Uh, This character can use the chosen power or powers until your next turn. So you're automatically going to get a free chosen standard. I mean, this is the definition of pick a power for an item. Possibly 2. But you're also going to deal damage to yourself sometimes. So I really like this. Uh, I think it ended up being like, what, 10 points less than the old Infinity Gauntlet? But surprisingly a lot less complicated than the old one. And if you can't get your hands on the old one, uh, this is a nice uh, runner-up for that. I really do like it. What do you think? Um, I like it a lot. Um, it's, it's risky, so it's not the best thing that you, like, in Infinity Gauntlet, like, that's cool, I can choose one power, for sure, and, like, that's it. No downside, no upside, I can choose one power. But then they kind of added, or, you can choose additional power, or, you can really suck, and you can hurt yourself, and Unavoidable really, really does not, does not really, uh, doesn't really make me want to use this gauntlet that much. Then no. again, all the gauntlets might have a way to deal yourself damage. I think it might be a way of kind of nerfing the gauntlet. It's like, it's either like, you can choose a power, ah, uh, kind of sucks, I got hurt, or you can choose power, or it's like, whoa, awesome, I gotta choose another power. Are you freaking kidding me? That's dope. So, it's risk and reward, which is cool, um, because they are just, we are just giving random people the Infinity Gauntlet, like, really, you know, should Pepper Potts have the Infinity Gauntlet? No, probably not. She <laughs> might hurt herself a lot. Like, so stuff like that, you know. So that's, it's kind of cool. It's a little thematic for people who might not know how to use the Gauntlet. It's really neat. Um, well, but I'm interested to see what the other ones do. Here's what I kind of think might happen. That special trait on the Captain America, the only to defend Earth in our reality, that, I think that might be a shared trait. I think that, oh, that particular gotta be. trait I'd will be on so. different ones. And while I think it will be really cool to put this Infinity Gauntlet on that Captain America so you get, like, free powers and you get free barrier, remember, uh, I think that will be awesome. But it might actually go better on a different character if they also have that same trait. So I guess we'll see, but I, I actually like it. Uh, it, it's not as cool as the old one, I and mean, the old one's, like, still kind of a little bit broken, but... A little bit. Yeah, yeah just a little. A little, uh, little bit broken, but I still really like it, so I'm I'm genuinely happy about it. All right, sweet. I guess that means we're going to be talking about our first super rare. It's really weird when you see 061, and it's not a chase, but it's a super rare, which is really cool. So we have Taskmaster, who has Agency X, Cabal, Hydra, Initiative, Assassin, and Martial Artist. Keywords, he has Indom, he has a team player team ability, which makes him a wild card, he has 6 range 1 bolt, and he's only 100 points, he has 6 clicks of life, he has 2 traits, no special powers, first one is, uh, Taskmaster does not count against theme teams, which is cool, 
Yeah. I like it when he doesn't count against. Instead, if like some of them normally say count for or against, and it's good to have keywords and still count towards the theme team. So he can be on literally any team. He just doesn't count against it. So that's really cool. Keep that in mind because he also has this. I memorized moves from dozens of chumps. Take your best shot. Free. Choose two. So <laughs> two. it's a long list of powers. So choose any combination of these two powers. Um, he has a bunch. So it's Charge, Flurry, Running Shot, Blades, Claws, Fangs, Incapacitate, Penetrating Psychic Blast, Precision Strike, Combat Reflexes, Energy Shield Deflection, Close Combat Expert, Exploit Weakness, Range Combat Expert. Taskmaster can use the chosen powers until your next turn. This turn, characters targeted by Taskmaster with an attack can't use the chosen powers until your next turn. You don't want your opponent to use their charge or their energy explosion or blah, 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 blah like all that jazz. You know, they don't want to have them to Running Shot and whatnot. Go ahead and just shoot them, and uh, then they can't use it against you. So even if they have protected at wits, uh, you can still get through them. So he can he can choose any two of those powers every single turn. What powers does he normally have? Well, he has no special attack or any powers at all on his attack line. He has toughness for his first two clicks, super senses on the next two, toughness on the last two. He has sidestep on uh, top four of his dial, and then he has plasticity. It's always an eight movement uh, for his speed. He has... Drula, that gray power, leadership, uh, for his first two, shape change for his second two on damage, and then perplex on his last two for damage. His stats start pretty strong with some 11s, some 18s. They kind of mellow out in the middle with 17s on defense, uh, getting a 16 there at the end. And his damage never goes below a two. Um, starts off a three for the first three clicks. So it's not bad. It's a really cool Taskmaster. Um, some could argue this is like the best way to make Taskmaster because he's just straight up picking all these really cool offensive and or defensive uh, that fit with uh, his style of combat of powers, which is really cool. So, I mean, his style of combat, which is everyone else's style of combat. So I can really dig it. I think that this Taskmaster is amazing. I love what they did with him, and he's just dumb. Like, if you have not seen this card, you really just need to go look at this card because I don't think it'll really do it justice until you see that list of powers all labeled out like that. It's just... Why? It's almost imposing just to look at it. I agree, dude, I agree. You're like, wow, so many choices. Because if you want, you can stay in the back, right? Range, Just choose Range Combat Expert, ESD, and just sidestep and snipe. Or you can just charge, flurry, sidestep, get right into the action. I mean, there's so many so many beautiful choices. Running shot, penetrating psychic blast, all this goodness. I mean, it's, it's honestly awesome. And why not just give them excess specs while we're at it? Because <laughs> why the hell not? That'd be dumb. So that would be dumb. dumb. So that's really exciting. Um, okay, so last uh, figure, and we kind of went in a weird order. Like, we could have started off with uh, this one and moved like, towards Chase. Yeah, but I But I'm going to explain why this means a lot to me, okay? So I really, really loved uh, the, U- the U.S. Avengers. I loved the new Avengers and the Avengers Hickman runs and stuff like that. And then th- that was when this character was introduced. And I was wondering when they were finally going to make her into a hero click. And seeing that they finally did, not only, like, that made me happy, but in addition to that, they might finally finish out the rest of the uh, Avengers from that run that they never got around to making. Like, maybe we're going to get a sunspot in this set. I don't know, but I'm really hoping that we do. So what did we get here? We got Enigma. And Enigma is coming in at 65 points. She is an Avenger. She has the Avengers team ability. She has five range, one bolt, no special combat symbols. Uh, The aim, Avengers, keywords, as well as uh, scientist, and I believe that's armor. A trait called You Are Always There For Me. Adjacent friendly characters named Iron Patriot or Rescue. Modify attack, plus one, if on the same click number as Enigma. Otherwise, they modify defense by plus one that's fun i mean i don't know how game breaking that's ever going to be it's not spoiler but like it's fun it's cool and it makes that iron patriot that we got that you and i hands down agreed was just garbage oh, it's bad it's so makes bad it a little bit more playable but people out there that just want to play that run of the avengers you know this makes it a little bit more playable so you're right. like, oh this is fun it's more thematic and and it's cool because they're like I don't, I don't, I don't know if they're just BFFs or if they're girlfriends because I'm, I think they might be girlfriends. Uh, special speed power with ten speed. It's called. This is called phasing in English. 
gives uh, Enigma phasing and teleport with one passenger and may carry characters with the flight uh, flight symbol. When Enigma uses phasing teleport and does not carry, after resolutions, you may choose a character whose square she moved through. That character gains immobile until your next turn. Super funny. For 65 points, I mean, you could theoretically just lock down another character. Offensive? No, not really offensive. She does have pin, uh, precision strike, so at least there's that. But if nothing else, you're just like way outclassed, way outgunned. You're like, I don't want to deal with this character. Just move through their square, lock them down so that they can't move. Maybe they're on the other side of a corner or something like that. And you know next turn they're going to hypersonic speed in or they're going to charge or whatever. Nope. Just run them through there. You got phasing teleport. You can go wherever you want. Lock them down. Super funny. Special defensive power. She has 17 defense on this, and she has, by the way, that special speed power for three clicks. She has a special defensive power for three clicks. She has shape change for three clicks, and precision strike for three clicks. Pretty cool. A portion of Pod. Pod is the name of the uh, being that she is attached to. The character's name's like Aiku or something what? like that. And, yeah, that's, that's her name, and then Pod is this alien thing that she's attached to called... Like Pod. a parasite? Yeah, kind of, well, maybe more like a symbiotic relationship That's what rather I was going than, for, than a parasitic one. But Okay, so uh, what does a portion of pod do for her? Uh, super senses and impervious, but only if Enigma has a fortify token. At the end of your turn, if Enigma wasn't moved or placed that turn, give her a fortify token. At the beginning of your turn, remove all fortify tokens. So it is possible for this character to have super senses, impervious, and shape change all on the same click. Just saying. Mm. <laughs> I think that's super funny. <laughs> she's only 65 points, which is the only reason I'm like, oh, okay, this is pretty good. If she were any more points than this, I'd be like, man, she's garbage. But just because she's got some staying power, she's only 65 points, she can lock down some people with immo immobile, I think she's pretty good, and I'm just really I'm genuinely happy to see her made into uh, the game. I don't know if we'll ever get another Enigma. She's a very, like, back-burner character in the comics, uh, so I just cool. I really like that we got her. What do you think? You know, I think she's a really cool uh, little piece, and she does help fill out the U.S. Avengers, since it seems we've been getting, like, one of those in a set, except for maybe AI, where we got Red Hulk and Iron Patriot, so now we got... Red Hulk, Iron Patriot, Enigma, Squirrel Girl, and I don't know whoever else is part of that team that may exist. Hopefully, that means we get a rescue. I don't know if the rescue they're talking about is Pepper or if it's a different person named Rescue. I don't know. Um, but I'm all I'm all for these new characters. She's kind of got a pseudo ghost thing going on, so I can dig it. Yeah, I like it. And uh, it, do you remember that uh, Shadow Cat that they made that had the ability to walk through? Uh, it was like robots and. She did damage to people if they had the robotic keyword. I was like, this is just a better version of that. Oh, right, so, yeah. I was like, this is this is kind of cool. So, hopefully, last thing I want to say about it is just hopefully we get a sunspot as well, and I think that will round out the U.S. Avengers. Yeah, that I think guy. so. I, I may be forgetting, like, one character, but it has been a very long time since, we, since we've gotten a sunspot. And do you remember when that OP kit came out a long time ago that had the cannonball in it that had – the Avengers keyword. That is how long I have been waiting for a sunspot with the Jeez, Avengers keyword. Jeez, man. Um, that is how long. So, hopefully... Don't do me dirty with this. All right, I'm done with character previews. Do you have anything else? I would say that is all. Okay, we've got a bunch of community to go through, so let's just jump into that. There are dozens of us. Dozens! Every week on Facebook and on Twitter, we put a Community Tuesdays question out there for you guys to jump on. Feel like you're part of the community. Community. Uh, part of this, the, the reason why Calder and I do this all the time is just you guys keep us going, and we always feel like you give you, you get back what you get out of it. Or, you know what I meant. <laughs> you get out of it what you put into it. Um, and when you guys jump in and answer all these things all the time, it really feels like there, there's a solid community behind this game and at least behind the Dial H, and we really appreciate that. So thank you for everyone that jumps on there. Uh, the Community Tuesdays question this week is, which comic book character has influenced your life the most? Was it a specific version of that character? And if so, which version? Now, before we jump into this, I did want to say, some of you guys 
got real deep about this. Like real it's a deep, deep question, deep. Chris. Yeah, yeah. It, it, some of you even said that. You said it was a real deep question. So um, I do want to just say outright, like, I respect everyone that was willing to lay that kind of stuff out there on the Internet for, like, all of these random strangers to read and hear now. Because, you know, that takes some gumption, guys, and we really appreciate that. So um, because of that, I, I think I'm going to lead by example maybe a little bit on my answer as well, just in case it comes up. But uh, do you, would you want to talk about your uh, person that influenced you the most? I think I know who it is. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, no, ever since I, uh, I read an Iron Man comp. No, it's, uh, it's Captain America. Cap's, uh, <laughs> Cap's my guy. Um, I don't know why I've always liked Captain America. I think it was one of the first comic books I ever gotten. Um, like around where I grew up, comic book shops were not a thing. Like, at all. Believe it or not, a of 200 people didn't have a comic store. Uh, but um, probably the first time I ever went to a comic book shop, Captain America caught my eye a lot. Um, one of my first comics I ever got was um, somewhere around, I don't remember the year, but it was a comic that I thought was really cool. It was a fireman on the cover, and he had Captain America's shield kind of on his like forehead as his, like, on his fireman helmet. And the entire book was uh, artists doing their rendition of how Captain America is kind of all of us as Americans, which is really cool. Um, I always liked being patriotic. I think it's a really cool thing to do and be um, Captain America. Um, but in that book, it showed, like, uh, Marines, soldiers with more of a red, white, and blue tint to their costumes, stuff like that. Uh, it showed this really great, um, like, cowboy on a horse, and he had, like, a blue, you know, button shirt, bandana, a white hat, stuff like that. And it kind of went ahead and show even, like, a teacher – then her rug was Captain America's shield, and she was talking to all these little kids in book. Like, it just kind of wanted to show you that we don't all have to have super soldier serum and be fighting on the front lines and do all this other stuff to be, you know, like, like Captain America. Um, and also, um, I was like, like, I'm a weak little kid, right? Captain America was just a weak little kid, and he, through perseverance and all this stuff, he became great. I mean, sure, he said, oh, all I did was whatever, but at the end of the day, he was chosen for who he is, not what he can do. And I think it's about, you know, looking inward and seeing, like, who we are, what we stand for, really getting our, our morals and our ideas and whatnot straight, and that anyone can really be Captain America. I, I really liked that. He was always someone I could look up to. Um, yeah, in the American dream. It's just stuff I like. I, I like being patriotic. I like Captain America's patriotic. It's a whole bunch of stuff I could keep going into, but that's why I like Cap. Yeah, that's a great answer. That's Absolutely. Great answer. Um, I... You know, upon asking this question, I didn't really take time to think about who influenced me the most, maybe. But I'll tell you about my favorite character and why they continue to influence me to to this day. Uh, my favorite comic book character is Thor and has, has been Thor for a very long time. Believe it or not, my first interaction with the character was from the video game Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Oh, man. Okay. And uh, in, the, like, the cut scenes and stuff like that. You know, it, I mean, he was only in there for, like, a few seconds and stuff like that. But the way that he talked was always really cool to me because he's got, like, that sweet Asgardian accent. And when you're <laughs> a kid, it, you don't really look into it that deep. It's just, like, what you like is what you like because you're a kid. Um, but then as I got, got older and then I actually delved into reading Thor comic books, I'm like, why do I like this character other than the fact that he's, like, completely B.A.? You know, he flies around and hits stuff with a hammer. I realize that the character is, like, much more – there's much more depth to the character than what a lot of people think. Um, if you watch the new Endgame movie, I think you'll see maybe some of this. Uh, Thor has always been one of those conflicting characters where he always wants to be good enough for situations. And I feel like I always identified as that, where he's always struggling to be worthy to lift Mjolnir. And I think most people can identify – with that, where you're going to come across situations in your life where you're like, am I strong enough? Am I good enough to make it through this situation? And that is what Thor is always doing, while at the same time, he's got so many responsibilities because he's not just a superhero. He's also, in Marvel Comics, he's this god figure. He is a prince of Asgard. He has people that he has to lead. So he has this level of nobility and regalness a lot of the time, but when he falters, he falters hard. But he always picks himself back up, always to make an example for those people around him. 
Uh, which is why I think I, I was so like upset when, when Thor lost his hammer uh, at, in the events of – it was like Original Sin. Did you read that? Original Sin? Ah, uh, no. Yeah, Sorry. so he lost he, – he became not worthy, and it became this whole thing about him trying to get the hammer back before it fell into like like – Jane Foster picked it up, and then Jane Foster was Thor for a while. How dare she? Well, no, I mean, it's not no, her fault. She was worthy I'm to pick up the hammer. Right, but, right. But um, when it came out why Thor was not worthy, I was like, that's not a good reason to not be worthy. I don't really want to spoil it, but I just didn't think it was He was unworthy crazy. when, like, what was it, Nick Fury, like, little, hey, let me whisper in here, and that yeah, was it, he right? Yeah, he whispered in Yeah. I, I don't, like... I know what it is, but I don't want to like tell everybody because if you go out there and you read that stuff, you'll be like that that reveal. You said you had the ligma. I told Thor he had the ligma. And that was yeah. it. <laughs> I get the ligma. Um, but the thing is, you knew he was going to get it back because you knew he was actually worthy of it, and that's what I some of these characters are. It's the fact that they think that they're not worthy, and the whole time they're actually worthy. It's really weird, but I, it always inspired me, and I've always really loved Thor for that. So um, and and things like that. So that's my answer. Uh, maybe some other people out there can relate. Let's jump into – let's go over to Facebook and see what some people said over there. All right. Uh, Eric Cage said too long. He didn't read. Raphael, due to his constant need for anger management, um, because, yeah, because uh, he went really into it, uh, really far into it. And just to save some time, it was like, yeah, Raphael. I will let you know that uh, – Super fan, Eric Caves. I did uh, watch the linked YouTube clips that you put in there. Um, he put it in. This is one of the uh, people out there that like really went into it and explained why. So that was a uh, pretty pretty good answer, man. I just wanted to say that. And uh, it, it made a lot of sense, I think, and other people could relate. So if you want to go on and read that answer, uh, you should. Jumping over to Twitter, Jedi Legend said, The strength of determination in Batman, no matter, how, no matter the odds. When you know you're right, stick to your batterings. Then there's Wolverine, short and hairy with some anger issues. He's loyal, but once crossed, holds a grudge forever. I heal pretty well, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, Brian, oh, nope, sorry. I went ahead. I went too far ahead. My bad. Jeff Pollier said, not a specific member of the Corps, but uh, Jeff Jones's, Geoff Jones, Johns, Johns, that guy, his take on the Green Lanterns changed my life. They aren't fearless, but had the ability to overcome great fear. Uh, took them from an obtain, unobtaining, blah, 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 I don't know why, I, I'm just doing like, blah, verbal gymnastics right now, I could actually achieve, after that, I have stopped being a coward in so many aspects of my life, and it's been better ever since, um, side note on the Green Lanterns, I know me and Chris both really like Green Lantern characters, Guy Gardner would probably be the comic character I'm like, most like, like if you were to make a comic book about my life, Guy Gardner would be like the closest one who I'm actually like, not what I look up to. So that that makes sense actually because you're both douchebags. So that makes sense. <laughs> they, that, that's just that's called having character. Sorry, <laughs> you might want to be not boring sometime. Anyways, just kidding. Uh, but actually, you know what? Knowing you in real life, that might actually be pretty accurate. <laughs> Chris Kurt said, "Invincible because he uh, because as a teenager, I thought my dad wanted to kill me." Also, Adam Eve would be fun to date. <laughs> I like how he's like, his girlfriend's pretty hot, too. Yeah. Dude, uh, weird choice for that pink power. Uh, Tim Sear said, Dr. Coctopus. I don't know what that is. I really don't. I don't know if that well, was a serious one. But, uh, let's move on. Yeah. Loyal, Loyal Miller said, Spider-Man, because he uh, never quits and always rolls with the punches. That I know of, they have not transferred that to Hero Clicks. Yikes. Youch. Uh, Brian Pulling. Superman. Not because he's all powerful, but because he always strives to be better. I have a tattoo of the Superman emblem with the word aspire above it uh, to remind me to always be better. Nice. We have Citizen Tiemu, our man from Finland, said, From the comic books, my two favorite X-Men, Beast and Colossus. But with the movies especially, got to hand it to Spider-Man, both uh, Peter's, Peter and Miles. So uh, he did link a oh, yeah, picture nice. of of Colossus all flexing. <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty sweet. Just saying. 
Uh, Robert Gallagher. Lex, I really like this one too. Uh, Lex Luthor. He taught me that people want to be the hero of their story at any cost. No matter if they are the villain in others, they will justify wrongs that they do, vilify others, and ignore the wrongs they do. So, like, he makes Lex Luthor seem more like a villain. I've always seen Lex Luthor as a hero of his own story. Um, that's because I don't like Superman. Um, but if Robert Gallagher hasn't, if this is for you, if you haven't listened to the song, uh, Suprema Lex, uh, go look that up on YouTube. It's like one of my all time favorites. I really, I really admire Lex Luthor for the adversity he overcomes. Chris. All right, I, I got an answer that I really want him to delve further into and explain because I just don't understand. <laughs> Ray W. said Rorschach. Who looks up to Rorschach? This is me asking, not him putting it. He just said, he just labeled the character. Why do you look up to Rorschach? Is it because it's just very distrusting towards like everyone around? Maybe he just really likes beans, man. I mean, just really like eating raw beans, can I mean, <laughs> That's my lifestyle. All right. Okay. Um, Peyton Golston. It's a mix between Goku and Static Shock. I started really getting into superheroes around the 90s and early 2000s. Both their shows were a must-watch. I would love to see Static Shock animated series. Hero Click set with Young Justice Teen Titans, The Good Show, yikes, and the original versions of the Dakotaverse Static Icon. Hardware, uh, I really love Static Shock. This is a great answer. Static Shock was awesome. Uh, I remember it was on TV every day after I came home from school. So, like, I'd come home and be like, yeah, let's watch Static Shock. I wish, you know, they, they should do more with him as a character. He's so good. I know. Uh, Citizen, Mr. Clicks Flick said, oh, man, that's a tough one. Some combination of Captain America, Spider-Man, and Daredevil. Oh, nice. Super fan, Christian Bogan. Batman is a original favorite. Blah, blah, blah. His rule of no killing and protecting the innocent was something that I thought was great, not to mention the world's greatest detective. However, I learned a lot more about Captain America, his beliefs, his ideology, and his integrity. It is why Steve Rogers, who has influenced me the most, he taught me uh, that you need to stand firm and fight for what you believe in, even if people don't agree with you. I thought Howard Duck was the world's greatest detective. He is the world's greatest detective. Duck detective. <laughs> Duck detective! The Big Stabowski said originally it was Iron Man due to how cool and popular he was. Then it became Blue Beetle, Ted Cord, due to him basically being the regular version of Stark. <laughs> um, I, I, I think he said I wasn't into being too rich, cool, and funny in every situation. Right. I mean, if you can walk up to Doomsday and have, like, a BB gun, it takes uh, some massive kahunas to do that. So good job on Ted Cord there. Um, Drew, David J. Gaffney, the black-suited Spider-Man, because he needs to grow a backbone, as told through his interaction with the symbiote. Mm. Mm. All right, all right. Vigilante Collectible said, With the amount of Spider-Man I read and watch, definitely him, up until the clone garbage... <laughs> He was handled extremely consistently from the comics to the cartoon to the electric company. I guess the lesson was that doing the right thing is hard. And then he also said he doesn't think that Spider-Man has been perfectly represented in clicks, to which Jedi Legend said, shut your dirty little mouth. Jeez, okay. Uh, Clearly, Dad bought Spider-Man. I want to know what he thinks is the perfect representation of Spidey. I also don't think that he's had, like, the perfect representation. But do you remember when we did casual comparisons for Spider-Man? And we came up with three different answers. Like, we did not have a consensus. Yeah, it was, was the Spider-Man that we wanted as the official Spider-Man. So uh, we're still out on that one. He's just such yeah. a – he's a character that a lot of people know for sure. They all have their own idea of him, so it's really cool. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Nice. I'm getting a call from Edward Shelton. I'm not even lying on my phone right now. I'm going to have to uh, <laughs> hit remind me in an hour and uh, leave Edward <laughs> Uh, sorry, Ed, if you're listening to this, really sorry about that. Um, Jake Napier said, I have to go with Spider-Man. It's been my favorite since I was a kid, and he always keeps going in spite of everything on top of him, being relatable in his uh, civilian identity. You know, I've been saying for years there's, like, certain things that you just have to add to characters. It just is part of their character. And every single Spider-Man should have Indom to represent that he's just one of those characters that never gives up no matter what. Like, he will sacrifice everything. And yet somehow they still leave Indom off of some Spider-Mans. I just don't even understand. Yeah, it's weird. 
whatever. Alex Alexander Trevora said, in my case, it was a group of them. I read it so many times that's impossible to pick one or a line phrase. The whole, In the whole, it's just amazing to me, and he linked a picture of the Justice League, and this is the iteration of the Justice League with, like, uh, Batman and Guy Gardner, Shazam, Martian Manhunter, we got Dr. Fate, Blue Beetle, and that's, I think it's Mr., no, that's not Mr. Terrific. What's the one, what's the one from um, Apocalypse that escapes stuff? Mr. Miracle, that's his name. And then the other people, I don't know who they are. Okay, nice. Um, Lance Miller said Spider-Man, Nightcrawler, Batman. Spider-Man, because of his bad luck. Uh, is willing. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, That's I, a reason to be influenced. You know, Spider-Man probably has the worst luck out of any character in comics at all. I once had a Spider-Man comic where he was like, ah, sure, I'm happy I got marinara sauce or whatever for Aunt May, and he misses a web and he dies. Like, he hits the ground and just <laughs> dies. And the book is about him talking to Lady Death and getting back. Like, he just dies swinging home getting groceries. Like, that's some pretty bad luck. All right. Well, I mean, they do mention it in the comics all the time. It's the Parker luck. They actually <sighs> do they really it say it all the nice. time. Yes, all the time. He's like, that's a typical Parker luck. <sighs> Dude, so, that's a thing. Terrible. Uh, Nightcrawler for his love of Jesus and Batman because of not killing. A lot of people say Batman because of not killing. I'm like, it's not that hard to not kill people, guys. <laughs> like, it's good to have role models, but that's your guy. You guys are setting the bar pretty low with the. Uh, Oh, oh, man, he's so good at just not killing people. Also, apparently the DC EU decided, well, throw that out the window. He yeah. kills all kinds of people. Whatever. Uh, we have an answer from Vigilante. Ben Jones, our man in Australia. He said this is the only person I've ever heard give this answer for, like, influential characters ever in my entire life. Sabretooth. <laughs> oh, here we go. Drew Otter he... somewhere is like, yes, yes. Okay, so check this out. He's he's seen his I'm sorry his seen better line from the Uncanny X Men 240. So he does link a, uh, a a quick little picture. It's clearly a snapshot from that issue. It's a comic book panel where it literally he says seen better. Um, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of it. Uh, always stayed with me. More notably, it has been Wolverine. Uh, as I try to be the best at what I do, but what I do is much nicer than Wolverine. So in this. Uh, little panel. It is, or is that not Harpoon? What is that guy? Is that Harpoon? I can't remember. Until the Marauders came to, to kill everyone they found, uh, it's him, and he says, pretty impressive. And then Sabretooth's like, seen better. Talking about <laughs> killing everybody. Wow. They found. <laughs> okay. All right. What? We're flexible, yeah. okay. Seen uh, better. Seen better. Uh, Tyler Murin, Batman or Spider Man? Batman only because of the notion. That with enough money and training, anyone can be him. And Spider-Man, because he has just about as bad luck as I do in his personal life. It's like that Peter Luck, man. Mm, Parker Luck. That, that, that Parker, Parker Luck, Luck, yeah. All right, the last answer that I have on Twitter is going to be from superfan, Little Plastic Superheroes, The Ruffian. He said, I try to strive to have a strong moral compass, compass like Cap and Superman. All right, sweet. Benjamin Emansky said, Soups, first character I ever read, and helps me have an escape during a difficult time. I'm going to rattle off through these since they're all actually really easy answers. Wait, hold on. Yeah. Ben Umansky is one of our protagonists. Oh, protagonist, protagonist, Ben Umansky. Yeah. Excuse me. Oh, you know, actually, I think you missed one earlier. Jeff Polier, that's Citizen Jeff How Polier. terrible am I? Just the worst. The worst. I hate this right. called the guy. Superfan Lucas uh, Van Hollen, Iron Man, the first movie that started the MCU, Life Will Never Be the Same. I kind of agree with that. Benjamin Orr said Captain America. Daniel Lennox said Wonder Woman, She's My Favorite. Cameron White said Superman. Ricky Ryan said Captain America. Jonah Fleming said Cap. Vince Gentile said Willie Lumpkin. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Jeff Bozeman <laughs> said Spider-Ham, and I really like this. Finally, another Watchmen guy. Matthew Peterson said Ozymandias, because I guess you just are a huge jerk. Really... Is it because he's so intelligent? Is that Maybe why? Maybe I can watch all these television scenes and somehow understand what's going on. I don't know. I don't know why, uh, but I'm glad he had a really unique answer, at least. Okay. Yeah, also, I, I never would have guessed that any of the Watchmen characters would have been the influential characters. I really like look up to the like comedian, uh, how he's just a horrible human being. Um, that's pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, I really look up to uh, Dr. Manhattan with his ability to want to be God. Yeah, uh, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Really, really fits my complex of how I do my uh, <laughs> You know, there's probably some people out there that really do that. Maybe. They're like, oh, but I, uh, I can't really answer with that answer because then they'll know I've got that complex going on. So at least you're doing a good job of hiding it, you sociopaths of ours. <laughs> we love you so much. <laughs> Okay, well, are we done? We're done with the Community Tuesdays question, right? We're done with right? the Community Tuesdays question, my man. Okay, let's jump on to Jedi Legends Heroclix Tip of the Week. Help you, I can. Take you to your destination, I will. He said, it's round nine. You're in the end game now. This turn, have uh, some team, What what is TA placed tokens? Team ability, uh, I don't know. <laughs> One has uh, theme team probability control token. So what if they have a token now? If they haven't used a costed action, give them one. Indom slash willpower will absorb the pushing damage. Make sure you're using same. Make sure you use your theme team probability tokens. Don't forget that uh, if you have Indom, you can eat it. You can eat that damage. And they can use your, your theme team props. Do you always remember to use your theme props? Um, no, I've made a few memes, actually, uh, where I just say, uh, t entire games go by, and I look at that little dice that I set out at the beginning, and I'm like, huh, I didn't use any of them. Huh. <laughs> I have forgotten once or twice. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've ever forgot, like, if I remember to use it, I probably didn't care about the pushing damage or, you know, not using pushing damage if they had Indom or whatever. But I've definitely forgotten to use it over the years, so right. don't forget to use your theme probability control, or affectionately known as probs in my world. Okay, hopefully that helps some people out. Um, now, earlier, we didn't know how long this episode was going to be, so we threw out a question on Facebook and on Twitter, like, hey, we're getting ready to record. You guys got any last-minute questions you want to ask us before, you know, we record? We might be able to run through some of that stuff, so... You guys are awesome. This question was only up for like less than an hour, and we got so many, so many answers to this. So, questions for us. You want to start us off on Facebook? Yeah. What do, what do we got? What do we need to answer All for right. our community? So, protagonist Benjamin Emansky, he has a weird question. I don't really think it's that weird, uh, but he recently acquired the Bat Belt. Do either of y'all understand how to use it? Yes. Okay, so Chris. I think that this is probably going to be the longest of the answers because I, I did scroll through a lot of the questions or whatever, so this is going to definitely be the uh, most in-depth answer we give to any of these questions, I think. Um, all right, so first of all, I, I highly recommend running a full bat belt anytime you do. Um, it's going to come out to 14 points uh, if you put a costume in there as well as the six items that you can put on there. I do want to point out that in the wording, it says, um, let's see, do, do you, the utility belt begins the game on the green click line after forces are revealed. After, remember that, attach up to one utility belt uh, costume if the costume slot is active, which it should be, and as many utility belt items as there are active slots. So at least five, guys, at least five. You need five. I'll explain in a second. Uh, the reason why you care that after forces are revealed for the attachment of the utility belt items is you can bring all these utility belt items and then you can see what your opponent is actually playing and then you can decide what you want to attach to your utility belt, which is awesome. And totally in line with the like theme of Batman as a character because he plans ahead, you know? So you're like, oh, okay, this makes a lot of sense. Now... If you just got this, like he did, and you did not know this, you should know that it was, was it watchlisted or just eroded, or I, I'm not really sure, but the rules on the card are not accurate anymore to how they are now. And if you pull up HC Realms and scroll down a little bit on, on the bat belt, the utility belt, you can see the figure errata. There's one that's like a really throwaway. Uh, the, the plus one on click number 19 is actually just a one. Okay, that's super crazy easy to understand there's two that they changed and the reason why they changed it is because the utility belt became so freaking meta for a second that they realized that they had to watch list this and change the thing entirely because people were doing the exact same thing with it which was this it, it was based off of this thing called prep time which is one of the special abilities on the utility belt you could basically just 
uh, give the character a double power action and turn the ability, the utility belt to any click that does not have a special power. Do not otherwise turn the dial at the end of your turn. Um, they would turn to click number 13. And click number 13 has, has flurry and it has plus two. And what it did is add plus two to all of your stats. So you'd have like, basically people would be like 13 attack or 14 attack and like five or six damage. And they would flurry attack you. So it was amazing for Alpha Strike. And that's what everybody was using it for was for Alpha Strike. So they nerfed that so it can't do it anymore. Um, the figure clarification that they changed says when activating this power, the click selected can't have a power on it, not just a special power. That's how they changed it. Uh, so you can't turn it to the one with flurry anymore because of that thing. So basically how it works is if you do anything with the character, whether it's like anything that's not a free action, uh, you have to roll a die and turn the click that many, turn the dial that many times, just kind of like how you had to do with the uh, Infinity Gauntlet a little bit. Um, and then what is revealed is going to be with these four different slots. You have the Utility Belt symbol, the Parachute symbol, the Times 2 symbol, and then just a Damage symbol. And then uh, the, util the Belt symbol, really simple, it just says... When a number is revealed, if all of the slots on the side are numbered, one through six, so it, just so you understand. When a number is revealed, indicating which slot it's talking about, if a utility belt item in that slot is used this turn, it's just not removed from the utility belt. Otherwise, it is removed from the utility belt, and you just kick it off. Um, the parachute says when a number is revealed, if that slot is active but empty, meaning you paid for it at the beginning of the game, but you used the item that was there, uh, at the beginning of your turn, you may attach any utility belt item to this slot. Any utility belt. So any of the ones that you brought kind of with the game, you could attach to it. It doesn't have to be the one that you removed from that slot. So keep that in mind. The times two ability has two basic different things that it does. The first one, when numbers are revealed, this is the most complicated part of the entire thing, I promise you. If you can get past this, it, it sounds more complicated than what it actually is. If you get past this, you understand the utility belt. When numbers are revealed, if the character uses a utility belt item in one of the indicated slots, it may use an item in another slot as a free action, as long as the two items are not the same. So there's like a bunch of different things that you can attach to the utility belt. And I do want to point out to anybody out there, there are numerous items that were put in different sets that can be attached to the utility belt that did not all come out with the utility belt. Like the utility belt came out in No Man's Land, and it only came out with seven items in there, and only like six of those can be attached. But if you actually look, I think there's some items in um, maybe not Gotham City, but the Batman set, and then the Streets of Gotham set, I think there's like one or two, and then there's like some con exclusive ones in there. So make sure you actually go and look at that stuff to see if you do want to go and buy particular items to attach to your utility belt. Know that they're spread out amongst different sets because there are some that are way better than other ones. Um, so what what the times two symbol basically means is. Well, hypothetically, if you have it in front of you or if you want to pull it up on HC Realms, let's click the number two, click number two. It shows uh, click. It shows the number two, one, and three. So if you use any of these, it's going to be, I think, a power action. And because of the times two symbol, it will let you use either of the other two numbers for, as a free action. And it changes. So if you go down to, like, click number nine, it shows the four and the five. So if you use five, you can use four for free. If you use four, you can use five for free. That's as, that's as complex as it gets. Um, past that, I mean, the, everything else is pretty much self-explanatory. There is a trait on it, and this is why you wanted to run it at least five of the six slots. It uh, says, if there are three or more utility belt items attached, the assigned character can use Indom. You probably want that. But really why you want it is says, if five or more utility belt items are attached, you can give the assigned character a free action and select an opposing character within 10 squares in line of fire. That opposing character can't use team abilities until your next turn. 
so much to unpack there, but it's not technically countering it, so it still can get around quintessence and power cosmic because it says can't use, not counters. And then also it says can't use team abilities, abilities being plural, which means there, any of the characters out there with more than one team ability on their dial, bam, can't use it. Or not necessarily on their dial. Maybe it's part of a special uh, power that they have. Like, oh, when this power is revealed, this character gets power cosmic. There are plenty of those. I wonder if that would work for ATAs as well, additional team abilities. I mean, probably, I assume, but... Mm, that is a good question. If anybody out there knows, make sure you let us know. Uh, the other the other ones, the four special abilities, those are very self-explanatory. I'm not going to go through all of those. Pretty much, I think, what I... You got what I was saying, right, Calder? Past that, I mean, just reading. Just read through the powers. They tell you exactly what they do. Is there anything else you can think of that you would like to add to that? No, I think you covered it pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Like, I kind of zoned out, and then I was like, yeah, I'm not going to lie, guys. I was like, yep, that belt. I've never used the Bat Belt, so I was like, I got no clue what we're talking about. It's a super fun way to make a regular Batman character into a super Batman character, basically. For, for sure. Only four, for 14 points. Um, the Batman towel does, like, some stupid stuff with, like, like, makes him super stealth. And all of the different options that you can put on the utility belt are just fantastic. So if you're the kind of player that really likes to have an edge or, like, a tool in your toolbox to use for any kind of given scenario, the bat, the utility belt is really a resource for you because there's lots of planning involved in it. It's a thinking man's resource, unlike some of the other ones that are just, like, beat stick resources, like the like the book, you know? You throw it you out leave my book alone. The hammers do what the hammers do. There's a lot more thinking behind the utility belt, but it's so fun and it's so thematic, and it's also only 14 points. All right. Hopefully that All right, that cool. Helps you. So that's one of the questions we had. I told you that would be the longest one. Um, the other we can fire through. Yeah, all right. McConnell Lamar, with Captain Venom having the ability to make a monster named keyword, what other keyword would you like to see this happen with? And who would the character be to do it? Um, I mean, I'd like another Captain America that's like, uh, we're all Avengers now, which is a really cool line. He says in uh, Fear Itself, I think. So, like, characters that share keywords with just him would also uh, get the Avengers keyword and or Captain America that makes the soldier keyword all... Uh, a theme team. That'd be cool. I love that one because you know I love my Avengers. Oh, yeah. My my answer would be Kang, and he would have some ability to meld any characters with either the past or the future keywords into a theme team with him. Nice. Uh, Simeon Bruce said, without spoiling Endgame, how badly do you want a full MCU set? I really badly want not only an Endgame, but an Infinity War, Captain America. I really want a Thanos um, there's tons of characters I want. I would love it if we could somehow do an MCU set. Uh, let's get in talks with Marvel about that, WizKids, because you would just have all my money if you made it. It would be amazing, and it would most likely be one of those sets, one of the only sets, where I felt like I needed to collect every single piece from it. Right. Chance of Call said, if you could make three non-comic characters, who would they be? He said he'd do Doc Holiday, one for sure. So you say non-comic doesn't necessarily mean real life, but uh, I'm your Huckleberry. I just really, really like the choice of Doc Holiday. <laughs> um, so I would 100% do Wild Bill Hickok. He was the uh, originator, owner, whatever, of Dead Man's Hand. Uh, Ash Williams, for sure, is a character I've wanted in Hero Clicks for a while. And then I suppose I would do Old Man Joseph Joestar. Not Old Man, but Stardust Crusaders Joseph Joestar for a non-comic character uh, for the last one. Chris... I'm going to cheat a little bit. They're not Cheater. comics, uh, but they're properties, and if they just made these into Heroclix, I'd be set. Uh, one is Bioshock, more Bioshock stuff. We never got a big daddy, and we never got, like, a big sister or a little sister, and I think that those would be really cool. Borderlands would be my second property, and I just I love Borderlands so much, so much. It was just one of my favorite games to ever play, ever. And then I just think a uh, a Game of Thrones set would be really interesting, especially because I like the Stark family. So maybe yeah, that could be a Tony's thing. Tony's awesome, dude. Tony's great. <laughs> All right. And that's it for Facebook. Uh, on Twitter, we got uh, our first one is from 
Super fan Christian Bogan said, what future sets are you looking forward to the most, Illuminati and later? Uh, well, uh, that's question one. Why don't we go question by question? What do you think? Uh, WWE and Illuminati are what the two future sets we know about I'm looking forward to the most. Oh, yeah, Illuminati I'm really looking forward to. Man, I, got, I just want that sunspot so badly. Once I get that, I, I really think I'll be set just for a awesome. while. <laughs> just mentally set for a while. Next question is, what characters do you hope to be included? Uh, in, in addition to that, uh, if it is technically an Illuminati set, I really would re just, you know, out of left field, they just finally go, by the way, we got the rights back to the Fantastic Four, so we could get a Reed Richards. What's the point of making an Illuminati set without Reed Richards? Because Reed Richards is a big jerk, that's why. Yeah. What about you? Um, do you hope to be included? So in WWE, I would really, really like a Sting to be included, or an alternative, like, uh, Kurt Angle would be really cool for WWE. So I'd really like those. And in uh, Illuminati, I guess, really, I don't really know what I want from this set, I suppose. Maybe a uh, another Howard the Duck, because I don't know, why not? All right. And the last question, this is going to be a fun one for you. Why is Calder the sexiest ranch hand of all ranch hands? I mean, I mean, have you seen me? Uh, have, I mean, have you seen me? In, like, <laughs> sorry, like, have you seen a, a picture of me? I, uh, it's a pretty self-answering question. Have you seen most other ranch hands? Uh, uh, definitely this side of the river, West River. Uh, I'm definitely the sexiest. And I'd say on both sides of the rivers. Um, I'm just going to say, but, just from an outside, and I'm, I'm totally biased, Calder lifts. All right? Does that's all you need to know. He does. Lifts. Doesn't skip leg that's day either. Um, he does. But no, yeah, because like most day. ranch hands, you guys might see like some sexy cowboys, and like those guys aren't ranch hands. Those guys like paid models to be in like some movie or whatever. Like if you see a real, and I mean a real ranch hand, they're normally pretty grizzly looking dudes. And uh, what can I say? I do it all. I'm a, I'm a good looking dude. That sounds really, really like tooting my horn <laughs> here. Um, so yeah. And hey, he asked. He asked. did ask. He asked. He kind of, he kind of got to go with it. You're welcome. All right. Loyal Miller said, "What are your favorite Avengers movies and comics?" I will start. Thor, obviously, um, the one from the comics more so than the one from the movies. Although with the Endgame movie, it did pr bring out some of what I really like about Thor. Uh, I also love Moon Knight. I've cosplayed as, as Moon Knight multiple times before. I just, I love him as a character. He's so freaking complex. I love Carol Danvers. Uh, I love, for some reason, and I still can't figure it out why, I really, really love Wonder Man, <laughs> even though okay. he's like, he's a pacifist, but his power set is just unbelievably cool to me. And then uh, Black Panther, I, I'm a huge fan of Black Panther. I've been reading a lot of Black Panther recently, actually, so I think that's probably why he's been on my mind a lot recently. So, yeah, there's, I love so many Avengers, though. I could go on for days and days. Ant-Man. Both Scott Lang, but I love Hank Pym more, so... Right. Yeah, go on. Um, It's like, for Avengers, it's Captain America. Just bam, right away. Cap's my guy. I don't have to rant anymore about that. Any other Avenger, honestly, it's really hard. Um, I would have to go, like, something like Hawkeye. I really enjoy Hawkeye in Avengers books. He's always great. Favorite Avengers, like, event style-ish book is like Fear Itself. It's one of my all-time favorite Marvel events. Not a lot of people like it, but I love it. It's got a great, a lot of good moments. Um, yeah, favorite movies. I like Age of Ultron a lot. Like, really? It's, I really do. I like it a lot. Joss Whedon kills it. I don't care about Ultron as a character, so I don't care that they messed him up. I care about Captain America, and that's really it, and he has a lot of good moments. Uh, that's the best suit, because it's the closest to being comic accurate and doesn't look bad. It has the white on the sleeves. No other Captain America suit from Civil War onward has the white, and I really like the white on the arms. That feels more comic booky to me. Um, except for Endgame, man. Maybe with the scales, it, it really kind of tries to take that from being the best suit. But I love the Age of Ultron suit. I love the opening scene. And yeah, I love I love every time Captain America gets a cameo in a movie, whether it's Loki or in Spider-Man. I love that. I, ha I have a, another question for you. Are there any Avengers that you hate? Um... Yeah, I hate the idea of some characters being Avengers. Like, I feel like we should cut it off at people, like, less than Spider-Man. Like, if you can do literally less than <laughs> what, what Spider-Man... So, like, Spider-Man is already, like, kind of immature, kind of like, but he can be an Avenger. Like, he has the mental fortitude to be an Avenger, to play, you know, with people as a team. So, like, if you are not 
as strong as Spider-Man, as mobile as Spider-Man. Like, Captain America is obviously not any of those two things, but he's just cooler, so it's fine. Um, but, like, I don't know. Uh, Deadpool being an Avenger, I really don't like that. I don't like oh, that. I Deadpool's that, yeah. not an Avenger, in my opinion. Luke Cage is just barely, I mean, barely an Avenger, in my opinion, honestly. He doesn't fit Luke Cage as a character, to me, for him to be an Avenger, because he's just more of, like, a Thunderbolt Heroes Fire. It sounds cooler. Like for Luke Cage, like as a character, um, I don't know. I don't know if Kamala Khan was an Avenger ever, but I hate that chick. Just don't care for her. So how do you hate? Oh, Kamala? so many reasons. I just don't like her. <laughs> okay, I disagree with you on Luke Cage being an Avenger, but that's only because the new Avengers run by Brian Michael Bendis, when they, he he's the one that made Wolverine, that made Luke Cage, that made Spider Man an Avenger. That was his decision. Uh, I thought he did such a good job, and it really made Luke Cage... My only problem is that he's an Avenger, and he's just, like, t-shirt guy, because he's not Power Man when he's an Avenger. He's just t-shirt. It's because he's like, I don't, I'm not going to wear a costume. I think it's stupid. I get it, like, but he's just t-shirt him. guy. <laughs> t-shirt guy. Whatever, okay. Avenger that I hate, and this is, like, a deep cut, Dr. Druid is oh, the worst God. Avenger that's, that's ever. That's accurate. He is such a horrible character, and he's such a douche. Have you ever read anything with him in it? No, probably not, honestly. He's, like, as arrogant as Tony Stark and does not have any of the, like, qualities that might make up for him being arrogant. He's just, like, a crappy person. <laughs> I'm glad he's dead in the comics. Dead. Cruel. Uh, <laughs> last one we have from Vigilante. Uh, ben Jones said, do you have any saying you say when you play? Saul called her on a clip saying, howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. We say St. Walker after every miss by one refers to the DC 75 St. Walker, and we wish we had him in all teams. Um, okay, do I have anything that I say? I, I don't – do. Uh, do you have anything else that you say, Do I have – I copy a lot of catchphrases from stuff. You know, just because it's easy. Uh, so I do howdy, howdy, let's get ready. Obviously, I try to start every game with that and, like, a good handshake and everything like that. And um, I like to, you know, throw in a couple of don't that be all, you know, stuff like that. Or <laughs> um, if something really bad happens, I'll say, ah, oh, goodness gracious, golly gosh. You know, I just say all those, like, ah, oh, son of a, you know, like, just funny words like that. Stuff like that. I know, like, ah, oh, it's too bad. I try to use um, a TF2 engineer line any can, like, any time I can, like, at all. I like, I love, I'm Wolverine mean, you son of a big gun, you know, like, stuff like that. <laughs> like, I, I love uh, almost all of his quotes. I like to throw those in, but, yeah, it's normally just howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. I think that I have more sayings or catchphrases or whatever you want to call it, maybe memes, on this show than I do when I play. Oh. Like if if there's a reason I can bring up Ghost Dad, oh, like, then I'm gonna bring up then I'm gonna bring up Ghost Dad. Like I, is I Ghost Dad the catchphrase? Just saying Ghost Dad. I don't. That should be that should be a thing. Just like when I rolled like double ones, like ah, talk about Ghost Dad guys. <laughs> <And> like <laughs> so stupid. Um, on on more than one occasion, if someone lays down a card and I don't know what it does, I will I will literally say, "What's that button do?" Yes. and I'd be like, can you slide me the card? Because they don't, they don't get it when I first say it. Right. And then they'll slide me the card. And then as the game is progressing, I'd be like, what's that button do? And <laughs> I've done that before, but, like, I don't think I actually have anything else, maybe, that I play. I say probs. I never yeah, actually like refer to it as probability control. That I, I think it's – I don't know why. I've just always called it probs. So when I roll, I'll be like, all right, theme probs, probs. Like, that. I'll say that. I think that's about it. That's all I got. So uh, I think that's that's all the community questions we had from throwing that up earlier. Yeah, right. Which uh, that, that was that was quite a bit. We really appreciate you guys. Like, man, you guys came in like full force real quick all of a sudden because we thought we weren't going to have enough content. Um, as promised, I did check the email. Uh, we got an email from March 31st. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, Superfan Eric Cave said, I had a big misconception come up at my local venue that I think is a common one. Oh, by the way, I read this, and then I sent this to Calder, and I think that Calder and I, we, we want to reach out to the Clicks community because we think there's a discrepancy in the email. We'll go into that, but I'll read it. When you carry another figure, the carried figure is only placed after the move is complete. 
This is correct. We're with you right up until this point. Here's where we're, we're going to start disagreeing with you. It's still there while the carrying figure is moving. Thematically, you would think that the big fig would pick up the character, move, then set it down. But with how the rules are written, you need to make sure all four squares of your destination are unoccupied. We were playing on a very closed map, Realm of Death, and a lot of people were trying to sidestep their colossal on top of their smaller figure to make them switch. All right, so Calder and I did come to the conclusion we disagree that that is how it works. Here's why. We did look through the core rule book. We did look through the comprehensive rule book. And if you go to the core rule book, which, by the way, the comprehensive rule book says go to the core rule book because we don't have anything to clarify in the comprehensive rule book. Under carry, it doesn't say anything about where characters go when you pick them up for carrying things. So the only thing that I could possibly remember was the 2015 ruling when High Father and Turtle were in the meta. And what they ruled back then was that when you pick up a character for movement purposes, the character is no longer on the map in any specified square. And because they are not in a specified square, Turtle's trait did not work anymore that is my remembering of that event but it has been a few years so it might be a bit hazy so if i were to be ruling at a venue and someone said what you said in this email i would say that is not how it works when you pick up the character they are temporarily off of the map until you end your movement and then you place that character after the movement has resolved i could be wrong so I will say that, and if anybody out there has some definitive proof as to how I am wrong, I would love to hear it. You send me documentation on Twitter, on Facebook. Let me know why you think it is the way you think it is, and then we will go from there, and I will course correct if we need to course correct and apologize in the future. But that's what I remember. Can you imagine, you like, waiting a month to hear someone be like, oh, I don't know if it works that way. Like... <laughs> What if I'm wrong, though? Like, if I'm wrong, I will admit that I'm wrong, as always. And we. Will I feel it. like you're right, but, you know, I didn't write no rules. I don't know. So we will we'll move on. Let us know. If you know out there in podcast land, let us know what you know, and then we'll go on. So um, that's all that I have there for the community. Do you have anything else that you want to talk about? Uh, no, I think that's like that's it. That's all. Okay, That's all I got. that seems like an episode to me. So, as always, you can follow us on Twitter at Dial H for Heroclix. That is the number four. On Facebook, just search Dial H for Heroclix. Uh, that is where you're going to get these last-minute questions thrown out there like, hey, what do you guys want to ask us before we record tonight? Um, and then you can also send us an email. <laughs> to dial H for hero clicks at gmail.com where I will definitely check it from now on. We check our emails about as frequently as strong bad does. So, <laughs> so I apologize. Uh, super fan, uh, Eric, because that was totally my bad. Uh, you sent us an email, another email. Don't want to talk about that one on the podcast. We will get back to you on that one relatively soon. All right. I'm out, man. I'm done. All right, fantastic. Uh, as a reminder for everybody, Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. You can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and seal products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. And for a time, you can use uh, code Dial5 at checkout and get 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. All right. Bye, guys. Happy trails. Ma, 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 ma.